Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. This is James Oldfield here with you, and we are glad that you're with us to study another portion of God's Word. We hope you have a pen and paper ready, and we want you to take notes. Examine what we're saying. The Bible says that the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they searched the Scripture with all readiness of mind and to see whether those things were so. And so we're hoping that you're doing the same thing. Friends, we don't expect you to take what we're saying at face value, we want you to examine the scriptures and we are so confident that what we're telling you is from the Bible that we actually have phone lines open and you can call in and ask questions or make comments or uh, have a discussion with us. Uh, it's a live call-in program and so you can call in be part of the program 336-427-9696 that's 336-427 Nine six nine six, or six two seven nine five six three. Six two seven nine five six three. That's uh, either four two seven W M Y N or six two seven W L O E. And the area code is three three six. And uh, this is a uh, a word from the Lord, and it's brought to you by your friends from the Church of Christ. Friends, what we're going to be talking about today, just to uh, lay a little groundwork, and we'll give you some more content information. Uh, we've got uh, a program about, uh, uh, really, it's a pretty uh, harsh and judgmental program, if you want to get right down to it. It's a lesson that I believe um, most people will find interesting. At the same time, they will, you know, might take issue with it. And hopefully you'll see the, uh, the truth about what the Bible is saying on the matter of judging. You know, there's some things that just uh, go together. And some things that just don't. You know, macaroni and cheese, they go together. Right? Uh, bacon and tomato, they go together. But when someone says righteous judgment, you might say, well, that, that doesn't go together at all. You know, judging and righteousness, how can they go together? How can they go together? Well, today we're going to be discussing that. And we're going to show from the Bible that judging and righteousness do in fact go together and that they're part, really a part of God's plan for us to determine what is right, what is wrong, what's pleasing to Him, and what's not. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about righteous judgment uh, here on the Word of the Lord. Friends, uh, if you would like to uh, uh, assemble with the Church of Christ, we meet in 250 the Boulevard in Eden, uh, North Carolina, and uh, we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship. And you can reach me at 276-340-2653. 276-340-2653. Oh, we also meet uh, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Sorry about that. So Sundays at 9 and 10 and Thursdays at 7. And if you want to reach me, uh, 276-340-2653. 276-340-2653. If you want to call that number, uh, you can call that number and uh, get on the air. It, it doesn't really... A matter, or you can call 336-427-WMYN or 627-9563-WLOE. Uh, or you can reach me at wordmanlord at gmail.com. Friends, we want to hear from you, want to, want to know that you're listening, uh, get emails uh, on a regular basis from individuals or texts from individuals that have been watching the program, listening to the program, and I'm um, glad that it's being a benefit, that it's reaching individuals and Hope that it will continue to do so and, and be a benefit to you as you st study and search for um, uh, God's message for you and His uh, uh, instruction for you in our lives, and which only comes from the Scriptures. And, and, and certainly you want to make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. So today we're talking about righteous judgment. I mean, can those two things exist together? Can righteous judgment exist together. I want you to consider something, friend. First of all, let's just consider the Sermon on the Mount. You know, Jesus, uh, I think in Matthew 5 and uh, Matthew 5 through uh, chapter 7, Matthew's chapters 5 through 7, Jesus uh, has been giving some instruction. This is really preparing for the kingdom that he's going to be establishing. So he's laying down some groundwork on what to expect in that kingdom. But in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus uses the word righteousness five times. All right, he uses it five times. In Matthew 5 and verse 6, he says, 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So righteousness is something that we can pursue. It's something that we can then search for, hunger for, look for. Then in Matthew 5 verse 10, just skip on down a few verses, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So righteousness is, is something that can be sought after, should be sought after, and it's also something that uh, you know, can be defended, if you will, something that uh, uh, you may be persecuted for. So it's it's a state of being, if you will. It's it's a, a way in which you live. It's a, a walk of life, if you will. And then, if you come on down to Matthew chapter five, Matthew chapter five in verse twenty, uh, he said, "I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven." So we, we're starting to see that individuals can have a standard of righteousness of their own that is not going to be good enough. It's not, it's not the righteousness that we're to be pursuing. Because in Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, uh, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So when we're talking about righteousness, we need to understand that it is a, uh, a standard, if you will, it, it's a it's a guideline. It's a rule that we can or we should seek to uh, live up to, and so that's righteousness. Now, what about judging? I mean, what about judging? Now, in the very next chapter, I mean, just after he says, "Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." Two verses later, he says, "Judge not that you be not judged." So. He says, seek first the kingdom and righteousness and judge not that you be not judged. Now, here's the question. Uh, is, is Jesus saying that judging is an unrighteous thing? I mean, if we're seeking righteousness and then he says don't judge, you might conclude, well, you know what? If you want to be righteous, you cannot be judging. You cannot be judgmental. But let's stop and think what the word judge means. Let's just look at, at, at the definition for a minute. The word judge means to condemn or to conclude or to pronounce an opinion concerning right and wrong. So if you're making a judgment, you know, you might be saying, well, uh, this is the right thing to do or this is the wrong thing to do. Now, it may be right or it may be wrong. You may be mixed up on it. You may be thinking it's right when really it's wrong. Or you may think it's wrong when really it's right. But either way, if you determine something is right or wrong, you have made a judgment. Now, is Jesus saying that we shouldn't make any kind of conclusion or come to any kind of conclusion about something being right or wrong? I mean, does judging have any place in the life of a righteous person? Now, some people might say no. I mean, some people might even say, well, you can't even be righteous. We'll, we'll get into this in a moment. But I want you to consider that Jesus uh, is not telling people to not judge at all. He is simply telling them how to make a judgment. He's telling them the guidelines on how to judge. Now watch this. Let's learn a lesson from the Old Testament. Now, some of might say, well, well, James, that's the Old Testament. But I'm not saying that that's the standard that we're going by, I'm saying learn a principle. The Bible says in Romans 15, 4, whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. So we can learn from the Old Testament. So let's learn about righteous judgment. How was it in the Old Testament that God determined how a person could judge righteously, how they could be right in their judgment or you know, how, how would a person be unrighteous? Uh, let's start in Leviticus 19, verse 15. Leviticus 19 and verse 15. Now listen to what he says. He says, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Well, what would that be? How would a person be unrighteous in judgment? Now, think about this. If there's a way to be unrighteous in judgment, then there must be a way to be righteous in judgment, right? You can't have light unless there's a dark. You can't have hot unless there's cold. 
You can't have right unless there's a wrong. And so you can't have righteous without unrighteousness. So if God is saying don't do unrighteousness in judgment, then there must be a way to do righteousness in judgment. All right, so Leviticus 19.15. Do no unrighteousness in judgment. And then he tells them what unrighteousness would be. What would it be to be unrighteous in judgment? He says, Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Now, friends, we all understand this. I mean, I think we can really, you know, you look at our society today and you say, yeah, well, the guy that got all the money, he he, he gets a pass, right? You see all the, the big uh, celebrities, you know, when they're out... Uh, doing things that are illegal, they get a slap on the wrist or they get, you know, a commuted sentence or, you know, they just get community service and they don't have to pay any fines, whatever. But if the regular guy, you know, the guy here in the street, you know, um, Joe America, he, he's, well, if he did the same things, you know, they're going to put him under the jail, right? So this is what we're talking about. Unrighteous judgment is treating people differently. All right, that would be one way. That's one way that you could be unrighteous in judgment. So the way to be righteous in judgment would be not to show partiality. Now, in Deuteronomy 1, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, this is what God is, is telling Israel. He said, I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, so they're very well-known individuals, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And he says, I charged your judges at that time, saying, hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. You shall not respect persons in judgment. You shall not hear the small, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of the man, of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it to me, and I will hear it. Now, actually, that's Moses talking, but God is giving him the instruction. So, here we have here, the way that you're to judge righteously is not to show partiality. You treat everybody the same. Now, friends, that's justice. We'd say that's justice. Now, you know, we, we live in a society, society where there's a lot of individuals that are talking about, you know, social injustices. And certainly there are social injustices. I mean, there's certainly individuals that are uh, given favoritism as opposed to other individuals. That would be unrighteous judgment. But at the same time, to say that every judgment is wrong or all judging is wrong, that's, that's unrighteous as well. I mean, that's not right. God is telling them, look, judge righteously between man and his brethren. You know, treat children with everybody equal, basically, is what we're saying. So, when Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged, in Matthew 7, verse 1, he's not saying don't judge at all. He's actually giving some principles on how to judge, on, on to be aware that, you know, if righteous judgment means equality, everybody held up to the same standard, then you just need to get ready because whatever standard you hold someone else to, they're going to turn around and hold you to that same standard. All right, now that, that's fair. That's why he says that. Now, here's what I want you to consider, uh, friend. You're listening to my voice. Now, I want you to consider this. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged, Matthew 7. Now, if you come down just a few verses, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, he says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Now, how are you to know if someone is a false prophet or not? How are you to know if they're a wolf in sheep's clothing? How, do you, how are you to know uh, who they are, what they are, if you can't judge? So it's not about don't judge at all. It's about judging righteously, being fair, being just, making sure that, that uh, uh, you're treating it fairly. Now, let me just say this. With that in mind, consider if you are being righteous in your judgment about what you hear. Let me just stop and say this. 
Now, you might be saying, James, you're off your rocker. You're completely crazy here. There's no way we can be judging. Well, friend, are you making a judgment about me being wrong? See, we make so many judgments in our lives. I mean, every day we're making judgments. Every day we're making decisions. We're making determinations if something is right or if something is wrong. We're, we're all doing this. And it may not be uh, uh, a very serious choice. You know, it may not be a life or death a decision, or it may not be uh, life or death for our soul. You know, it may not be a decision that, that uh, will endanger our soul, but we, all, we make judgments every day. So when it comes to determining what is righteous when it comes to our salvation, surely we can see there, there's a need to make sure that we are right, to make sure that we are righteous. Now, just to show that you can look at what people are teaching, what people are saying, and how they are, uh, what they're doing to see if they're teaching right or not, listen to what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 16, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase some of this because it's kind of lengthy, but in Matthew chapter 16, Verses 6 through 12, Jesus says to his disciples, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when his disciples heard this, they reasoned among themselves and they said, Well, he's saying that because we didn't bring any bread. But Jesus wasn't talking about bread. He wasn't telling them, Well, you know, you, you, you didn't bring any, any, any bread. I just think it's funny that they even would think that way. But he, he says, Why are you thinking this way? He said, don't you remember, you know, uh, five loaves and we fed the 5,000 and we had so much more to take up and then there was the seven loaves and the 4,000 people that we fed and how many baskets you took up? And he said, this is, why did you think that I'm talking about bread? When I said beware the leavening of the Pharisees, I'm talking about the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, here's my, here's my point, friends. Jesus is talking about what other people taught. When Jesus said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees, he's talking about the doctrine. He's talking about something that they were teaching. Now, was Jesus being unrighteous when he talked about what these people taught? I mean, we get this all the time. You shouldn't be talking about other people. You shouldn't be talking about what they teach or what they, uh, what they believe or things like that. That's just, that's just wrong. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Well, if I shouldn't be doing it, why was Jesus doing it? See, why, why was Jesus doing it? Why was Jesus saying something is right or doctrines are right or doctrines are wrong if he just told his disciples, don't judge? I mean, was he being a hypocrite? Because listen, if he says don't judge and then he turns around and does it, even if he is God, even if he is deity, he's being a hypocrite if he's saying, don't make judgments. And then he does it. So, you see, when we're reasoning together, we have to stop and think, well, okay. Uh, when Jesus says, uh, beware the leavening of the Pharisees, or when he says, beware the doctrine that they're teaching, he's making a judgment. So, Matthew chapter 7, judge not that you be not judged, Jesus must not have been talking about he must not have been talking about uh, uh, judging at all. He must, be, he must have really been talking about judging a certain way. Because if he says, uh, he says, if, if he's talking about don't make any judgments at all, then why is he sitting there talking about it? See, so we're, 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 we're kind of calling down the fact that, well, we can make some judgments here. Because notice this. In Matthew 23, let's look at another example of Jesus. Because I know we're, we're, I know we're both going to agree, we're all going to agree that Jesus is not a hypocrite. <laughs> okay? I mean, if you think Jesus was a hypocrite, then we've got bigger problems. We've got bigger fish to fry. All right? We got, we have, that's a whole other conversation. But here's what he says in Matthew 23. Jesus spake unto the multitude, and to his disciples. Now listen to what he said to them. This is Matthew 23, verse 1. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. 
Now, listen to what Jesus just said. He said, the scribes and the Pharisees, they're in a position of authority. They're sitting in Moses' seat. And he says, whatever they bid you do, that, that observe and do. But do not do after their works, for they say and do not. So, what did Jesus just do? He just made a judgment about these people. Now, what if, uh, what if there was somebody in the in the audience there that heard Jesus say that? They heard Jesus say, "Oh, you know, the scribes and Pharisees, you know, they're basically they're hypocrites. They say and do not." He made a judgment on that. And so, let's say, uh, you know, Brother um, or Bartholomew was sitting there in in the audience that day when he heard Jesus say that. And so, Brother Bartholomew he goes out and. He finds uh, Brother Thaddeus. And uh, Brother Thaddeus, uh, did you know what, hear what Jesus said? Well, no, Brother Bartholomew, what did Jesus say? Well, Brother Thaddeus, Jesus said that the scribes and Pharisees are hypocrites, and he judged them. He said, he said, don't do after their works, for they say and do not. He said they, they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. He said they lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their little fingers, with one of their fingers. And he said, all their works they do, they just do it to be seen of men. He said they make they make broad their phylacteries and they enlarge the borders of their garments, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets, and they love to be called a men rabbi rabbi. He said, Don't don't do that. Now, Brother Thaddeus says, well, Brother Bartholomew, that sounds kind of judgmental. And I thought Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. Now, do you see the dilemma? If Jesus has said again, don't judge at all, what was he doing judging? Well, is that really the example that we're to be following? I mean, Jesus is the example that we're to follow. So how is it that Jesus can be judging? How is it he can be righteous if we're not supposed to judge at all? I submit to you that he was making a righteous judgment based upon the righteous standard. Now that's why Jesus said in John 7, 24, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So he's saying this is how you judge. You judge according to the righteous standard. And if you're holding up to the righteous standard, then you are making a righteous judgment. All right, you're making a right judgment, a correct judgment. And you can do that. Now, you, So you can do that as long as you're holding up the right standard. Now, someone's going to say, well, who is righteous? Jesus was righteous, James. Jesus was righteous, so he could say that and he could do that. But you and I, we're not righteous. You know, there, there, there's, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, now, what are we going to do about that? Well, that's a good question. Let's answer it. First, I want to give you some phone numbers. If you want to call in and participate in the program, 336-427-9696. That's area code 336-427-WMYN or 627-9563. 627-WLOE is how you can be part of a word from the Lord. Now, so let's go back to that question. How can we judge and be and judge righteous judgment if we are not righteous? For I mean, Paul said in Romans three verse ten, "There is none righteous, no not one." Well, first of all, let's look at the context of Romans three. In Romans three verse ten, Paul is quoting and he says, "There is none righteous, no not one," and he goes on to say, "There is none that understandeth; there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way; they are altogether become unprofitable." There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So he's not saying that everybody's like that. He's saying those people that had rejected God, he's saying those people that had uh, uh, turned away from God, if you will, those individuals that uh, stopped seeking after God, they're the ones who are not righteous. That's not a blanket statement made about everybody. There's none righteous, no, not one. No, that statement was reserved for those individuals who stopped following God, who had stopped seeking God because they're no longer seeking righteousness. See that? They're no longer seeking to do what God says. That's why he says there's, there's 
there's none righteous. Now, he's talking about a specific group of people here. So, I know that, that it is possible for there to be no one righteous among a group of people. If a group of people have stopped seeking God, I'm just looking at the text again. If a group of people have have no understanding about God and his will and they don't seek after God and if they are, are altogether become unprofitable and none do good, no, not one, then yeah, they're, they're unrighteous. But that doesn't mean that everybody is unrighteous. You say, well, James, how do you know that? Okay, well, let's look. Let's, let, let's get a, a, another word from the Lord. All right, it is written again, is what Jesus would say. Consider, if you will, this. In Acts 10 and verse 34. See, friends, the Bible, the Bible is going to be a good uh, commentary for us. If someone says, well, th there is nobody that's righteous. Well, Peter didn't know that. In Acts 10 and verse 34, listen to what Peter says. Peter opened his mouth. Now, he's talking to, to Cornelius. He's at Cornelius' house. And he says, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, wait a minute. A man can work righteousness? Does that make him righteous? I, I would say yes. A man that worketh righteousness is accepted with God. In James 5, and verse, James 5, verse 16, he says, James says, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, why would James say that if it's not possible to be righteous? If it's not possible for a man to be righteous, why would the Bible tell us to pray fervently because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much? I mean, <laughs> imagine... All right, the official for a prayer of a righteous man availed much, James, but you're not him, so don't worry about it. I mean, if, if there's none righteous, no, not one, we might as well just cut James 5, 16 out of the Bible because, I mean, there's not a righteous man that can be effectual and fervent in prayer. If there's none righteous, no, not one. See that? So there is a righteous man, there can be a righteous man if he's, Working righteousness, if he's following after God. Let's look at one more. How do you know who a righteous man is? First John, First John, chapter three, and verse seven. First John, chapter three, and verse seven. Here's here's the apostle John. Little children, let no man deceive you. But he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So just as God is righteous, we can be righteous if we do righteousness. So if we do what God says, then we can be righteous, and therefore then we could be considered righteous men and or women, right? He that doeth righteousness is righteous. So how is it that there's none righteous? Well, in the group of people that aren't doing righteousness, yeah, there's none righteous. But if we're doing righteousness, then we will be righteous. And you say, well, James, what is righteousness? Well, let's look, look at uh, uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 5 and verse uh, 13. Uh, the writer says, Everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Unskillful in the word of righteousness. So we know that the word is what reveals God's righteousness. How do I know that? Look at Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, wherein? The gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, how, how, how do you know what what righteousness is and how do you know if you're doing it? Well, if you're following the word of righteousness, you're following the gospel, then you can be righteous. You'll be righteous. I mean, that's pretty simple, isn't it? So, so what we've gotten down to is, 
yeah, a person can be righteous. As a matter of fact, if a person is righteous, then they're going to make righteous judgments. Because if a person is righteous, that means they're following the Word of God. And if they're following the Word of God, then they're going to make judgments based upon the Word of God. Therefore, that's going to be righteous judgments. So if I'm, if I'm using the Bible as my standard, then I'm going to be uh, able to say, yeah, this is, this is righteous judgment. I mean, it's, it's the standard. The, the, the Bible is God's standard, so if I'm using that as my standard of um, guideline, then I'm going to be able to say, yeah, this is a, this is a righteous, righteous judgment. Okay? So that's who's righteous now. So it's a righteous thing to judge. Now, listen to, I, I, I like this uh, illustration because it puts righteous judgment together with a person who is really much like, you know, living in a society like we live in today, really. Uh, in Second Peter 2, verse 7, 2 Peter 2, verse 7, listen to what uh, the Bible says. God is able to deliver. All right? God knows how to deliver the godly. And, and Peter's going to use an example of Lot. And this is what he says. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. He says, God delivered just Lot. Now, he didn't deliver just Lot, as in he's the only one, because he delivered Lot's uh, two daughters as well. Actually, he delivered Lot's wife and two daughters, but the wife looked back. So it wasn't just Lot, meaning he's the only one. He delivered just Lot. He was just. He was a just man. He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds and the lord knoweth how to deliver the un how, the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished now again keep in mind friends if you've got unjust and you've got wicked people then by by default you have to have just people and righteous people or unwicked people so if you've got a righteous man, then there has to be an unrighteous man. If you've got wickedness, then you've got to have whatever the opposite of wickedness is, I guess, virtuous. You know, so uh, here's Lot, a righteous man, a just man. He had a righteous soul, and he's called the godly. He's called godly. So godly, righteous, just uh, Lot. God delivered. Now, what was it that this righteous, just, and godly man did. Well, we know where he was, right? He was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, he pitched his tent towards Sodom, and the next thing we know, we find him in Sodom. He's actually living there in the city. And in Genesis 19, listen to what the Bible says. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about a just man. And can a man, can a just man, a righteous man, can he make judgments? Uh, in Genesis 19, verses 1 through 7, and, the, and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and he entered into, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and he did bake uh, unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. So everybody from Sodom came out, surrounded Lot's house. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, listen to what Lot says. 
Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Now stop right there. Just, righteous, godly Lot stepped outside and called all the people of Sodom that were surrounding his house wicked. He said, don't do wickedly. Now that's kind of judgmental, wasn't it? Wasn't that kind of judgmental for this godly, just, and righteous man? Wasn't that a pretty, pretty bold thing to do or judgmental thing to do? And as a matter of fact, listen to what the people say. Now, friends, this sounds exactly like people today. You could take Genesis 19 and you could put it right into, you know, uh, uh, United States of America 2018. Here's what they said. They said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow, talking about Lot, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Now you hear what they did? Lot said, what you're doing is wicked. Don't do this wickedly. Don't do so wickedly. Don't do this. It's wicked. Peter tells us they were wicked. They were ungodly. And Lot's telling him, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. What you're going to do, what you're wanting to do, is it's wickedness. And they said, you came in to sojourn among us and you're going to judge us? You came in and you're going to judge us? That's right, friends. Righteous, godly, uh, Lot, righteous, godly, and just Lot, he judged people. <gasps> you know what, friends? We shouldn't be surprised at that at all. Because just people, righteous people, godly people are going to make righteous, just, and godly judgments based upon what? The righteous standard, which is God's word, tells us is right and wrong. Now, apparently Lot had been reproving a lot of these people from their wickedness. Of their wickedness. All along, I mean, I mean, all this time, he's saying, you know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And and look what they said. We're gonna do we're gonna do worse to you than we're gonna do to them. Now, friends, today. <laughs> If you said that today, you know, if Lot said that today, boy, he'd, he'd be uh, sent to uh, educational classes, right? Boy, Lot, you need to learn how to, how to control your, your language. That's not very politically correct to talk about sodomites in such a way, to say that they're ungodly. It's not politically correct to talk about Caitlyn Jenner and his perversion of wanting to be a woman. Oh, yeah, that is very, very judgmental. That's very harsh. That's very cruel. See that? But Lot made the judgment. Homosexuality is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Fornication is wrong. You know, gambling is wrong. All these things are wrong. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, James. Now you're really stepping on it. You know why? That's okay, because if you're making righteous judgments, you can, you can say those things, because it's right. See, it's held up to the standard, the standard of God's word. And so righteous judgment is judgment that has been based upon the Bible. Now, if right and wrong were determined by God's standard, then the only way to judge right and wrong is righteous judgment. I mean, friends, think about this. If there's no right and wrong, then then how do you know what to do? What's acceptable? If if there's no right and wrong, if there's no if there's no standard, everybody gets to do their own thing, and no one can say anything about it. But the people who don't like righteous judgment, they have a sense of right and wrong. They have their own standard. 
obviously, because they think it's wrong to judge something as wrong. And they themselves are hypocrites. I don't know of anybody, I don't know of anybody that says to me, it's wrong to judge, you shouldn't be judging who has just not become a hypocrite. I mean, I mean think about that. If it's so wrong, then why do you tell people that it's wrong to judge? That's what we're talking about. Jesus said, judge righteous judgment. So it, it must be more than just okay to make a judgment, a righteous judgment. It's more than just okay. As a matter of fact, I would say it's required. It's required. When Jesus said, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment, that wasn't a suggestion. That was, that was a statement. That was a, that was a command. Judge righteous judgment. If you're going to judge, make it a right judgment. Make it a judgment based upon what's right and wrong according to God's word. In, in 1 John 4 verse 1, uh, John says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. That's easy, isn't it? Again, how do you know if someone's a false prophet? How do you know if they're... Uh, if they're not teaching the truth, how can you try someone? How can you test them if you're not judging them? And how can you determine if they're false teachers if you don't judge them? See how, how, how simple that is? So it's not about don't judge at all. It's about judge righteous judgment. All right? Now, we're... Uh, but... 20 till, 20 before the hour, so here's our phone numbers again. Area code 336, phone number is 427-9696, That's 427-WMYN or 627-9563, 627-WLOE if you want to be part of the program, a word from the Lord. So, judge righteous judgment. Yeah, friends, it's, it's, it's a command. Listen to this. In, in Ephesians 5, verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. How do you know if they're unfruitful? How do you know that they're darkness? But rather approve them. How do you do that? How do you tell the unfruitful works of darkness that they are in fact unfruitful works of darkness unless you make a judgment? I mean, you, have, you in some way, shape, or form, you have to determine this is unfruitful, this is a work of darkness, and this is wrong, so I'm going to approve them. Now, now failure, failure to do that is what brings in all the problems. See, failure to, to make these determinations, failure to make these judgments is, is what causes all the problems. And, and friends, we talk about denomination, denominations all the time that don't judge righteous judgment, that don't use righteous judgment. But and the members of the Lord's Church ha have the same problem too. I mean, they don't make judgments like they should. And, and that's why there's we've got problems too. In the Lord's Church, we have problems because people don't make righteous judgments about unfruitful works of darkness. For example, there's individuals in, I guess you would say, in our brotherhood, in, in our schools, and a lot of, in most of our schools, so-called schools. Um, there's individuals, say, at Freed Hardman, that there's a man named Ralph Gilmore, that not too long ago was associated with individuals that would use mechanical instruments of music or vocal bands. They would make percussions and sounds like that with their with their voices. Now no one no one's gonna say, don't do that. And so these people can go to places, other places like OCU and Bear Valley and other places. And what do they do? No one says don't do that. No one says don't do that. As a matter of fact, what people do they do the very thing that God says is unrighteous judgment. Now remember the verses that we used in the very beginning. Jesus said, uh, God said, don't judge unrighteously by showing favoritism to people, by showing, you know, that you're uh, honoring, the, respecting the face of, of, of a man. Well, that's what they do. They go, oh, you know, well, Brother Lockhart, you know, he's, he's a good personal friend of mine, so I'm not going to say anything to him. When he goes to some place that uses uh, a vocal band, when the Bible clearly says 
uh, sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. Oh, well, you know, um, these, these brethren, they're, they're good, close, personal friends, and, you know, I, I, I trust their judgment. What? You trust their judgment? Basically, you're saying you're trusting their judgment to make righteous judgment when it's clear that when they do things, say things, and teach things that are not righteous, you know, that's unrighteous. So it's an unrighteous judgment. It's an unrighteous judgment to say, yeah, I'm going to get that a pass. All right? That's, that's unfruitful works of darkness. And yet no one, when people don't want to say anything about it, isn't that, isn't that uh, showing that they're not being righteous in their judgment? And how do you do that if you don't judge at all? I mean, righteous judgment comes from looking at what is being said or being taught, looking at what's being said or done, and then saying, let's, let's just hold it up to the Scripture. Let's just hold it up to the Scripture. I mean, when the Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, and here's someone over here that's participating with a false teacher, uh, when you say, yeah, you shouldn't do that, that's a righteous judgment. Now, if I listen to, if I listen to a, uh, a Baptist preacher, or any kind of denominational preacher, and I hear what, uh, what he's teaching, Right? I hear what he's teaching. And I'm examining, I'm holding up his, his uh, doctrine to the, script, to the scriptures. Well, if I find that he says something that's, that's not in keeping with, uh, uh, with the Bible, then I can say, yeah, that's not right. No, that's not, that's not a problem. That's not a bad thing. That's actually doing what the Bible says do, and that is to say that uh, it's it's unrighteous. It's it's a false doctrine. Now here's here's an example. Here's here's a Baptist What's preacher. He said that we don't have that childlike faith. And, and here's a Baptist and, preacher. What is that childlike faith? That childlike that's going to say is trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. And like I said, it's believing and repentance is that I believe, and repentance is automatic. That I believe. When I believe, repentance comes automatically. And before I got saved, before I received Christ in my heart as Savior, when when I was walking toward Now did you hear that? That's Jerry Carter, Dr. Jerry Carter, Regional Baptist Church. He says, Belief, when you believe, repentance is automatic. Now, friends, have you I mean just stop and think about that. Just uh, the face value of that. If you believe Repentance is automatic. Well, friends, all I have to do is go into the Bible. I have to just go to the Bible. And I can find verses that, that will tell me that there are two different things. I mean, Jesus said in John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So, belief is is one thing. Now Jesus said in Luke thirteen three, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. If they're the same thing, why did why does you even use repentance? I mean and if they're the same, why even say repent? If, if they're the same, you know why? Because they're not the same. I mean repentance doesn't come automatically when you believe. I mean the Bible says the devils believe and tremble so if, uh, if the devils believe, if the devils believe and uh, repentance comes automatically, now you've got the devils repenting. That's James 2.19. Is that, is that the truth? Is that a righteous judgment? Is that righteous to say, is it righteous to say if, if um, belief is, or if uh, repentance is automatic with belief, then you would have devils being saved, or you have devils repenting. So when I look at the Bible, that's, you know, that's contrary. That's that's not going to fly. So it's an unrighteous doctrine. Let me say it that way. It's an unrighteous doctrine. 
to say that belief is automatic. Our repentance is automatic in belief. And so we're, we're, we're talking about just looking at what, what is being said, things that are being uh, said and done, taught, so forth, and looking to see if they're, you know, if they're true. Let's just see if they're true. Now, sometimes, uh, sometimes you have individuals that want to make the the plan of salvation. I guess you might say the plan of salvation in John three sixteen. Well, John three sixteen, John three sixteen. Period. Well, listen to uh, what what the Bible has to say about this. John three sixteen. I think everybody knows that verse, right? Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but but have everlasting life. Now, listen to what, uh, here's someone actually making that statement and I want you to listen to it so that we can just hear that it's something that people do say. Here's a lady and she's, she's going to be saying that, uh, or making an argument. You want to work with the Lord? Uh, yes, John 3, 16 says, why we have to make righteous judgment. If someone says, well, this is all you have to do, and then starts adding things that aren't in the verse, then it's a righteous judgment on my part to say, that's not all you have to do. John 3.16 is not all you have to do. There is, there was, here's the lady saying this, she says John 3.16 is all you have to do, but then she says, but you got to repent, you got to confess, which are not in that verse. And so the only way that, that she can get them in the verse is to say that they're all included in just believing in John 3.16. It's not in there. So, friends, when we're talking about what must you do to be saved, it is a righteous judgment to say the total plan of salvation is not just in one verse. You will never hear us saying that you have to just get one verse, use one verse. It comes down to making a righteous judgment about the whole Bible, putting it all together. Now, friends, why is it people just don't like righteous judgment? You ever thought about that? 
What, what is it about uh, righteous judgment that people just don't like? In John 15 and verse 20, the Bible says, Jesus said, Remember the word I said unto you, the servant is not greater than, than his Lord. If they have persecuted you, they will also persecute. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. You know why people don't like righteous judgment? It's because it exposes their sin. It exposes what they're saying, it exposes what they're doing, it exposes what they teach. And it takes away their cloak, if you will. It takes away their hiding. It takes away their their comfort zone. And so that's why people don't like righteous judgment. And that's why they will say, you can't judge, can't judge, can't judge. But friends, the Bible says we can judge. We can judge. And so no one wants to judge because then someone can turn around and judge them. That's that's the fact of the matter. People say, I, I don't want to judge because then someone might judge me. Listen, listen to this, uh, this man. He, he explains it very well, uh, what many people believe and why they don't like judgment. Because... So, he said, if I start judging, they're going to start judging me. Well, everybody wants to give everybody else a break. Everybody wants to give everybody, uh, no one wants to, to be looked upon, so they give everybody else a pass. Well, friends, you can't be righteous and give unrighteousness a pass. I mean, Jesus said in John three nineteen, this is the condemnation that light has come to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, Neither cometh to the light, but his deeds, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now, friends, this is why we're making righteous judgment. This is why we're saying you can make righteous judgment. Just base it upon God's word, and it will be righteous judgment. Now, let me ask you this, friends. I'm, I'm about out of time. I've got about two minutes left. Uh... If you were taking a test and the teacher gave you the answers or let you look at the test, would you do it? Friends, we're all going to be judged by the Bible. And I think we would all look at that test if the teacher gave it to us. Well, God has given us his book. And Jesus said, we're going to be judged by these, by these words. The words that, uh, that I've spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Now, you may not like to be judged, but you know what? Acts 13, 46 says that if you reject the gospel, you judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, John 13, 46. Friends, if you don't respond to the gospel, you're the one making the judgment, and it's going to be against yourself. Friends, I'm out of time. I want to give you my contact information one more time. You're going to reach at 276-340-2653. A word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me. 276-340-2653. 250 the Boulevards, where the Church of Christ meets, and they're the ones that bring you this program. Hope that you will come out and visit with us as you have opportunity. We'd love to see you, love to visit with you, love to study with you. Hope you hear from you. So give us a call, 276-340-2653, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. And if you have a Bible question, just drop me a line, let me know. Uh, we'd love to study with you. Uh, but until next time, friends, make righteous judgment by making sure that what you're using is a word from the Lord. God bless. Have a good night. We'll see you next week.